it appears that I'm a tactical genius and I am very good at this game. Uh, Paul was not wrong when he says I am the one who is the tactical mastermind source of and the man who has the better footballing knowledge to pull this off. He's not wrong. Welcome back to part two of this AFC Bournemouth save. Uh, last time out we played the first two games of the season and we got two comfortable wins. One in the league, one in the Carabao Cup. And since then, what have you missed? A bit, because I played some games. We go to the schedule and we continue the form. So the first game I played, we drew 0-0. Nothing actually, literally nothing happened. Uh, we got 3-1 win, 2-0, and then 3-0 we got drawn against Sutton in the next round of the Carabao Cup. We also get Blackpool in the third round, which is nice, so we're keeping that we're keeping that fairly uh, an easy run, if you want to put it like that, although Blackpool are in our league, I think. I can't remember if they got relegated or not. Actually, no, they did. So, again, easy, easy draw. So, we're lucky on that. Set pieces, I am not wrong. We are good on set pieces, and I love it. The corners are absolutely fantastic, um, brilliant. We had a slight interesting thing happen, is we had Dominic Solanke go out on an injury for about 10 days. Uh, hopefully, I can't remember if he came back or not. Uh, again, I'm going to apologise if I sound like death. I have still got this cold thing. <laughs> it is what it is. I'm here still playing this. Uh, medical centre, please. Current injuries, just Lewis Cook, who will be back in three to five weeks. Okay, Solanke did come back. We'll have to keep an eye on him. Speak of the devil, we just literally just get an injury update there and a risk assessment. Nice. So, in terms of today, what have we got? We have a home... And on away, no, two home games, Barnsley and QPR. Okay. That works. And we also got the transfer deadline as well, I think. I did notice that come up somewhere. Yeah, the day we're on here is the transfer deadline. It's annoying that we got no money to do anything. But I'll happily listen to some offers because it will... Give us some leeway to do something in January, maybe. Maybe loans, although I don't really want to rely on loans. Never fall in love with a loan. Never do that. Never, ever, ever do that. As falling in love with loans can be very sad and heartbreaking when they have to go back. I found that out in one of my personal saves I did. I did basically a full-on journeyman save where I was at Tum... Or I still am, actually. Got that on the side somewhere. I'm at Tunbridge Wells Angels or Tunbridge Angels. We had a really nice loan player. He absolutely tore the league apart, made us overachieve, and then he goes, and now we have just relegation material. <laughs> so, you have that as well. Uh, transfer window roundup is now... Okay, the window's now closed. Some interesting top deals... Biggest spenders, of course, Man City. Most players in Swansea with 32 players. What? Most players out, Man City with 48. Gutting and redoing the squads, I'm sure. Top deals, obviously, Lukaku, legendary striker. Not sure on that just yet. We'll see. And then Lucas Digne. On deadline, went to Newcastle for 49.5 million. Nice to see in this save, they can make the takeover work with some players, which is cool. Um, they reckon the top transfer window deal was Ramsdale from Sheffield to Arsenal and Cole Palmer from Man City to Swansea on loan. Okay. Oh, in our league. Okay, I'm with... Um, biggest spenders were Fulham with 21.5 million. Yes, they're going up. We know this. And um, wage bill wise, we are third highest with wage bill with 525k per week. 
Not quite as much as Fulham, mind. Jeez, what happens to a hole, though? Are they really that bad these days? Like, what what happened to the days where they just bought strikers off of Gillingham and then just did all right with them? Cool. Confirm selection. Maybe we had some signings, but I don't know about, because obviously it already does the signings that happened IRL when I start the save. Uh, let's go to the squad. On international duty, that's fine. Is David Brooks someone I want? Yeah, of course it is. I might as well just tick everyone off. I've got, yeah, I've got the room to do that. Perfect. Nice. All right. Okay, in terms of the tactic, nothing has really changed. Uh, I went back to that higher line of defensive or that high defensive line that I dropped for a bit in one of those games we played. Uh, it's been fine. I, I, I'm really just all out attack. That's my style of play, I guess. Bannable has always been like the 4-2-3-1, just gag and press attack, but obviously that's not as overpowered in this game as it was last year. But I even do the same in FIFA, so if you ever watched my Seven Oaks career mode, you'll know that 4-2-3-1, just attack, because... Yeah, you just got to throw all your bodies forward when you haven't got the greatest players in the world. Because if they can't defend, then what's the point? You might as well send them up to try punt one in. Right, uh, we have got another injury. Is that Steve Cook, Lewis Cook? There's too many cooks. Okay, two days is fine. Oh, no. Sam Shering out for seven weeks. Is he... Probably not going to get into our team at all. That's not a problem. Right, so currently we're in international duty period for all of our players. So a lot of players going off on international duty. Maybe not some of the English English geezers. But a lot of the foreign players will be going off. I.e. Lerma, who play for like Gabon and places like that. They, they will be off on their on their civic duty for for their country right um, oh he's training a guy okay did I request this apparently so apparently so he's not going to be any good in the future he is as old as me I love that there's me looking for my coffee it's right in front of me this guy, actually, can I just say, is an absolute monster, this Lloyd Kelly. Honestly, game after game, he performs, and he's always good in training as well. I like it. The hard workers are the ones that get into my team. Train well, play well. This is it. I don't go off of who's better on paper. I've never done that. Okay, 23s. I don't care for the under 23s. I did also go through the responsibilities, delegate loads of stuff to my staff. Uh, obviously, this is all standard stuff that you would expect any football manager man to do. Basically, the only stuff I've kept for myself is initiating, negotiating, and finalising major signings for the first team. Anything else I couldn't care less about. Um, obviously, I get my scout reports come through. If I see something, I'll just go... Yeah, cool, I'll do that. Otherwise, you get your board of directors coming back with some really stupid signings, which I just couldn't care less about. Uh, and I'm pretty sure there was some stuff I actually added to the shortlist. Yeah, there was. Um, cool, yeah. Yeah, so James Tarkowski uh, is actually wanted by Crystal Palace. So these are ones that are not going to cost me an arm and a leg at all, and ones that my scouts recommended were very good signings. Um, I think the one that I was looking at was this guy. Possibly. There was one. I think he was... Oh! Yeah, this was the guy who went off to OM. Or OL. Yeah. Didn't quite get in there for that. But these are the guys I was looking at anyways. Uh... Surely this guy would cost an arm and a leg. Yes, it would. Okay. 
These were the ones I was looking at. We got no money yet, so it's going to be a while. So if we can actually uh, loan some of them, I would be quite happy with that. I'm sure someone like... Oh, this would be good as well, because he's quite experienced. And it only costs three mil. I wonder if I went for that, the board would let me do it. Okay, coming up to the game now against Barnsley. Um... Should be a game we do okay in. They're sitting in sixth. We're sitting in second still, I think. Uh, third at the moment. We haven't actually dropped too many points, which is fine. I assume neither of they, if they're in sixth, early days yet anyways. Uh, one thing I will say with this tactical approach that I've gone with is that I will have to rotate quite a lot just for the high tempo because the high tempo does genuinely kill off the players by the 70th minute of the game but the intensity is what is keeping us very lethal with these nice wins um, yeah so but it works whatever works I don't mind rotating using different players I mean so you see at the moment having to I've actually, well, in the cut I just did, I've had to agree to uh, rest Lerma just because he's lacking fitness slash sharpness, whatever you want to call it. This should be a capable team, very capable team of doing that. And the thing that does kill him, look at that, the intensity is almost, it's, it's just all the way up there. But this is what I like, they have finally become familiar with the team. And that's what I like. That is what I like. Everyone, please, that with the team. Obviously, you'll get a few players which are like, eh, what's going on? But that's because they haven't played many games yet. But you expect that. Not everyone can be 100% familiar with how you play every single game, but oh well. So, we're favourites, apparently. Just get out there, enjoy yourself, play a nice game of football, get a couple of goals, get a nice 3 0 win again. That'll be nice. See, look, two minutes in, and we're already on the attack. Header, cross in. That didn't... The net moved. I'm sorry, the net moved. <laughs> All right, sure. Sure thing. <laughs> sure thing. I, I have no idea what happened there. So, just seeing the league table there, hole in first place. Looks like they're overachieving. Uh, apparently they've only just been promoted back to the championship from League One, and we've hit the post. Brilliant. So yeah, apparently they're very much overachieving, which is interesting. If they go up to the Prem with us, that'll do, as the whole people will say. Take a shot, please. On Smith. There you go. 1-0. That, see, look, I've, I figured it out. I figured it out. Work it into the box. Give them those sort of low, sort of medium crosses. Head it in, because that's what we're good at. It's the same with corners. We score headers, we score crosses. In open play, as well as set pieces. I love it. Absolutely love it. That is a very nice, well-worked goal. Bournemouth, it should hire me IRL. And now it's just a case of holding on to this lead. Or even getting another one. Uh, Greenwood. Is that not the Greenwood I was thinking of? I'm sure. Loving these crosses. I've, I'm, I think I might have an instru instruction on this somewhere. Saying to focus more down the right. Because it all it seems to always come from Smith. Need it from the other side a bit. I'm sure that went in as well. What is going on? That was over the line. Working this quite well I guess. Not really getting anywhere just yet. Over the top. Into Christie. 2-0. Brilliant. Holy, the play there was actually liquid. Absolutely liquid. Got to give him a round of applause for that. 2-0. And that would probably take us to half-time. Barnsley cannot cope with us. They can't. Yeah. There you go. Give a worthy display, which is worthy of the press's good words. 
is basically what I've just said there. Cool. Now, let's hopefully see if we can score in the second half. I have noticed we score a lot less in the second half, probably because our players have died. So this is the sort of time where I do drop back the defensive line a bit and then slow things down. Bit of time wasting just so we can uh, <laughs> stop the players from keeling over and having heart attacks because, yeah, the players... Obviously, it's intense. Obviously, you know this. I keep saying it. They just keep bouncing the ball back to us, and I will not say no to that. Okay, nothing really coming off this attack just yet. But the highlight isn't over. Into Solanke, 3-0. Easy as you like. They just open like the Red Sea. It's just like Solanke, just Moses there, just parts them. Just open. <laughs> and there he is, in with the ball. Easy finish, bottom right. Easy as you like, really. Easy as you like. Uh, oh, okay, that didn't take place. I did some stuff just to keep the players from dying. Right, three goals, three different goal scorers like that, and it's time to bring off some players. Right, good old impact sub Morgan Rogers coming on, as always. I'm not sure if he's done anything just yet in the team. I can't, I can't remember if he scored or not. I'm I know I played him in the starting lineup because he covered for uh, Solanke when he went out for nine games. Or nine games? Nine, nine, nine days. What am I talking? Yep, yeah, do that. I was not expecting that at all. Really nice ball over, mind. And then just round the keeper. Keeper just made himself look like an idiot. Yeah. Clean sheet would have been nice. Oh well, you can't win them all. This game actually does move us into first place, though. Which is really nice. I would like to see another goal to consolate the uh, goal we just conceded. Like that. That's a good goal. Dominic Solanke again. I think that's a brace for him now. Man's on fire. Absolute beast. There was a time Liverpool fans thought he was the greatest player in the world, or was going to be, and then he ends up at Bournemouth. Yeah. Typical uh, Liverpool fans picking up their players. Right. Last minute of the game. Another goal? Sure is, that's a hat-trick for him. That will be Dominic Solanke's seventh goal of the season, and we're only just in September. That's pretty, that's pretty insane. Well, there you go, 5-1. Jesus, I know I said I wanted one goal. Uh, is there anything to say, say don't get complacent? No, there's not. All right. That's a fucking good win for us. I will take that all day, every day. Right, was that a hat-trick for Solanke? Added his second goal in the 18th. No, he got two. I thought it was a hat trick for him. Could have swore he scored twice. I thought he scored a header, that low cross, and that last one. Whatever. What? Ever. Either way, he scored two goals. Uh, we are now on a six game unbeaten run. Love to see that. Uh, there's me saying this team isn't guaranteed to get promoted, and here we are, basically, in the form of our life. Or Bournemouth's life. But. The idea is I wanted to get promoted to the Premier League. I wanted to sort of balance between the two leagues because it's likely we go to the Premier League and go straight back down because we have no money. Anyways, next game, literally two days, QPR. It's another game we probably should win. They're sitting in eighth. Uh, yeah, look at that. We had stronger momentum when looking... Yeah, just look, look at that. We were just fucking brilliant that game. Cool, so going into this next game, it looks like, according to the press and the media, we are the team to try and beat. Uh, people want to beat us, and if they can, it is like, oh, we've done good. Uh, very nice, he has had his work permit accepted. Uh, we can now finalise his deal, yes. No, why have I delayed it? 
Oh, we don't have the funds. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to have to talk to the board. Uh, yeah. Finance. Is there a way I can... I don't know how I can actually say can I have this player. Look, he's going to be brilliant for us. Is there not a way I can do that? Oh, what can I... Change the weight. Oh, we actually overspent on our wage. We are indeed. Okay, so same situation as my other save. Not that anyone will know about that, but... That is slightly annoying, so... Realistically, it would have been a sell-to-buy situation. If that doesn't go through, I suppose it's not the end of the world. I really wanted that player as well. He looks really good. I know he's old, but... You need those old and commanding people at the back of you team. Like Cahill, because Cahill's been brilliant this season as well. To put him next to him, that is just a solid defence, if you ask me. Right, here we go. Barnsley. Um, I think that's a good enough team. There's a few tired players there. Yeah, I might swap out. How good are you? Not very. Who are we playing? QPR? Oh, it should be fine for a game. Because Christie's tired as well. Everyone's slightly tired, in a way. But it was a game after a game that just happened two days ago, so they're going to be a little bit tired. Uh, every oh, look at that. There's not a single unhappy face there over the team selection, team tactics. And tactical approach. Love to see that. Come on. Go out there, make your make make a difference. Go make a name for yourself. Yeah, we're gonna have to do some early substitutes at like half time. We've got two players that are quite tired already. I may have to start to drop the intensity of this tactic, because it is killing our players. The results are nice. The five ones, the three nils are nice. That is over the bar. But at the end of the day, it is genuinely killing our players. So Blackburn are beating hole four nil. Holy! So they're going to drop points again, and there we go. We get the goal. Perfect. Um, wow! Blackburn are actually taking a battering to whole city so maybe whole city have just had an easy run and they are tipped to not do well i don't know i don't watch whole city <laughs> why would i uh lerma with the goal actually uh that is quite a nice goal that is quite a nice goal uh i actually i'm thinking of someone else when i say lerma i was thinking of the guy that went... I'm pretty sure he plays for Fulham now, no. The one who was from... Who was Gabonese. I can't think of his name. Or L Lima? Or Lema? He played out in the Serie A for a while. I think he played for Juventus. Uh, so Lanky get a second. What was that? He tried to chip the keeper. Right. Uh, so far, this is going quite well. I'm going to bring on my man... He's not even on the bench. Oh, I'm sad. Jamal Lowe. There you go. He didn't get no game time or whatever. Whatever. Uh, we win 1 0. Uh, that was actually an excellent win, I guess, considering we got injury in that game. Be interested to see how long he's out for. Ryan Christie injured for about a month. Yeah, okay, I don't think that's the end of the world. Not really, we've got someone who can go in there, I think. Yeah, he shines again, Lerma's been good. Smith stotted, spotted at Vitality Stadium, interesting. Um, oh, okay, we've got eyes on Lerma already because he's having a good season. Wow, Blackburn actually battered them 5-1, I like to see that. So that drops whole big time. 
Oh, maybe they didn't... Oh, okay, this was the game they did drop points then. Okay, because, yeah. It's like a live table, isn't it? Uh, love to see that is Derby. Yeah, Derby here on minus 13 points. Oh, that's just... I think, I was actually tempted to do the save on them with them, but I just thought I do not have the patience to get out of their financial situation. It would just be horrible. Right, so we don't have another game now for a few days. Let me just click through these emails quickly. Uh, Christy thigh injury, yep. Red card controversy. Did they actually give a red card for that? I didn't see the thing to say it was a red card. I'm actually going to watch that again then. I just thought they did a straight substitute after that. I didn't see the red card. Let me go back. I didn't actually see the... What? I haven't actually seen anything. That doesn't show a lot. I see the player on the floor, then our player just goes, Oh, I'm dead. And given a red card. So if that's how that went down in the game, then that is... No wonder it's controversy. My player diving has given him a thigh injury. There's nothing else going on here, which is cool. Top of the league, like to see it. So, if you did enjoy this second episode of the Bournemouth Save, leave a like, subscribe, put on those notifications so you never miss an episode of this, as well as anything else we're uploading, i.e. Formula 1 and FIFA Player Career Mode, which... We'll probably slow down for a bit, just take a bit of a break from FIFA because it pisses me off big time. Uh, other than that, I will see you in the next video. Ciao.